Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Today I'm going to be painting Santa Baby and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa and uh, this painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Tina Nilsson. So I have a benefit from my Patreon members whereby every now and again I'll put out a call for photos, they'll submit them. I select a few of them and turn them into YouTube tutorials. And as a thank you, I send the original off to whoever submitted the photo. So I hope Tina enjoys her painting because <laughs> I enjoyed painting it. Um, if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photos for me to turn into uh, tutorials and or learn more about the Patreon membership program where there's a bunch of other painting benefits that you get to utilize to increase your artistic skills, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can of course switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, green oxide, Mars black, chrome yellow, fire red, cobalt blue, burnt sienna, and burnt, uh, burnt sienna, sometimes I call rust, and this is burnt umber, and I most likely will call it brown. <laughs> and of course, you can switch up those colors if you like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a quarter inch wide flat bristle brush and I have a number four round synthetic brush. And I will call these out by name as I use them. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's, oh, you can also in my shop purchase things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's a resource for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are gonna draw an outline for the baby. I'm gonna be using my number two pencil. You, of course, can be using any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and we're gonna connect those markers. And by the time we're done, we will have a nice basic outline that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So we're not going for any fine tuned detail. We just need some big shapes that will help us along in the painting process so we know where we want to put things. So I'm gonna guide you to find the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, the center of my canvas is somewhere in this vicinity. What I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna make myself um, a big oval type of a shape that is gonna put my head in place. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go about halfway between here and the left side of my canvas. So that brings me right about here. And then I'm gonna go down from that about an inch. Give myself a marker in through there. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come straight up from here until I'm about two inches away from the top of my canvas. Give myself another marker. And I'm gonna come down from here about a half of an inch. So this one is a little bit higher than this one, just a, maybe by a quarter of an inch, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself about halfway between this marker and this marker. So that's somewhere in this vicinity. 
and I'm going to go to the right about two inches. Give myself another marker in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go directly over to the left from here until I'm about three inches away from the edge of my canvas. So what I just did there is I gave you one, two, three, four, five markers. I might as well give you a sixth one while we're at it. <laughs> so go if you go directly from this one, this is your quarter way mark, and go up until you're at about the same height as this one, that'll give you another marker. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna connect those in an oval type of a shape. So, so oval is gonna be have soft edges, something like this, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just gonna guide us into a shape for the head or a place for our head to go. So we've got the head large enough to support the baby body. <laughs> so something like this will get us started. And of course you can see mine is not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just something along that line will help you out. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the head and the hat because I know where my, my head is right now. That's this shape in through here. So I'm going to create the end of the um, it's going to be a Santa style hat. So it's going to be a red hat with a white trim around the edge and a, and a kind of a droopy ball at the end. So I'm going to make a ball in, in this area in through here. But I'm not going to close the top. So I put a little spacer in between here, about an inch and a half. This is maybe an inch below this halfway point up here. So something like this is going to give me the ball of my, of my hat. So from here, what I can do is I can give myself a little kind of under curve like that and give myself two diagonal lines like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find myself back at the, this little marker at the hat and go almost all the way up to the top of my canvas, right in through there. I'm going to find myself back at this marker and do the same thing, go almost all the way up to the top of my canvas. I'm going to travel down here maybe about one and a half to two inches. And then I'm gonna travel down here about one, two, three inches. So maybe a little bit above where we had this halfway marker in through here. So I'm gonna um, connect, oh, and I'm gonna to go to the right of this, maybe about uh, one and a half inches, somewhere in through here. So I'm gonna connect all these markers right now. I'm gonna take from here, I'm gonna dip this down and connect it up to here. I'm gonna dip this down, connect it to here. I'm going to take from here, I'm going to go straight or diagonal to the right, go diagonal to the left, and then bump it up at the top. I'm going to connect here to here, and then I'm going to connect here to here. I want to show you uh, in a minute, we'll erase some of these guidelines, but this is just getting us in the vicinity of the, the shape of the hat. So I'm going to come up from this corner where the ball is, about a half of an inch, give myself a marker. And then I'm gonna come back to this marker and through here and come inside the hat, maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch, somewhere from there. I'm now gonna connect this marker to here. And then this one's gonna be to here in a similar arc to what we had for the oval type of a shape, like that. Almost done with the hat. <laughs> so now I wanna give the exterior shape a little something more interesting than a circle or a oval. So I'm going to take from right about in through here, I'm just going to bump out this corner a little bit. So I'm going to take this and just bump it out just a little bit like that. And then on the right hand side, I'm just going to kind of maybe bring this into, uh, this little side didn't really need much to it. So now that I've got that head in the hat, so I don't get confused during the painting process, I'm going to erase or partially erase some of these guidelines. So inside this pom-pom, I can erase this one. Inside this triangular type of a shape, I can erase this one. I know my pencil is not going to erase all the way, but this will at least give me a, a place to um, know that that was an erase line. It doesn't need to be used as a guideline anymore. It was just there to help us get the right shape of the hat. So I'm going to erase this line in through there, and then I'm going to erase this oval uh, edge back in through here. So now we have the bottom part of the hat, which is going to be the white fluff, and then we have the top part, which is going to be red, and then we have the pom-pom, which will be white. Now we're going to start to build the body. 
So the body, we're going to start with where our shoulders are going to go. So if I find myself the right hand side kind of of that, that hat and through here, I'm going to come down just a little bit farther than my oval and make myself a little marker in through here. Then on the left side, um, where I have this marker in through here, if I come down from that about an inch and a half and go, oh, well, it's almost two inches, and then over to the left about two, two and a half inches, give myself another marker. I'm going to connect these two. They are slightly angled. The right one is up a little bit higher than the left, and I'm going to give them just a tiny bit of an arc. So I'm going to take and just go up just a little bit, and then this slopes back down to this one, and then give myself a little arc. You can even pet, go past your markers just a little bit, just so you understand that that's going to be the shoulder area. I'm going to put a neck on. So my neck, I'm going to have coming kind of at almost the halfway point on my pom-pom. I can just give myself um, a little, um, extend that shoulder up into the, the hat like this. And then on the left-hand side, just to the right of this marker in through here, this is where I can just bring this down into that shoulder. So a baby's head is going to be much larger in proportion to its shoulders than, a, than an adult. So that's why our, the shoulders are very narrow compared to that head. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself the bottom left-hand corner of my canvas. And I'm going to come in about one, two, three inches and give myself a marker. So this is a, from where I put my shoulder marker. I'm a little bit to the left of that, maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters. And then I'm going to connect here to here with not a super straight line. So I curved it around that shoulder and then as it's coming down the arm, I'm going to give it just a little kind of bump out. You could even pull it in a little bit more um, where it meets the bottom of the canvas. That's totally up to you. And then I'm going to come in from that, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and give myself a vertical line that is not super straight. This is going to uh, separate the back from the inner part of the left arm. So something like that. It's going to look a little narrow because part of the arm is in front of the baby's body. So this is just a sliver of that arm. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself the halfway point at the bottom of my canvas. And then I'm going to come to the right of that about two, two and a half inches somewhere in through here. I'm going to connect here to here. I just want to give us a, a place to work from as opposed to starting to make some um, shapely lines. So I'm just going to take it from here and then just bring this down here. This can even be a light line. You don't need to make it super dark, but I'm going to make it a little on the darker side just so you guys can see it. This is just allowing me to guide you through the other markers. So the next marker I want to do is kind of the elbow of the right side. So I'm going to come to the right of here just a little bit and give myself a, a little kind of arcing line, maybe up about an inch from here, and then just arc it a couple of inches. I'm going to guide you into a, a large oval like bean type of a shape <laughs> so we can put this arm on with good proportions. So if you come about halfway in this line, somewhere in through here, and go straight over to the edge of your canvas until you are about an inch and a half away from the edge of the canvas, somewhere in through here is going to give us a, a good marker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here to this elbow area. We can even kind of round this a little bit. Um, with an oval type of a shape that's not going to be much more than maybe um, maybe two inches. So if you come about halfway between here and here, about well here, and then go down to the bottom of your canvas and come back up about an inch, that'll be about as uh, that'll give us a good uh, bottom edge to it. And then the top edge, if you come up maybe uh, another two inches, that'll give you a good top edge. So once I've got those, now as I do this, my my oval, or my oval type of shape is going to be a little curved like this. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to come up like this, I'm going to come back down. Think of it as a super long kind of bean type of a shape, like that, and then I'm going to come in through here, and then bring it back. So it's kind of a little beany type of a shape. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. This again is just helping me guide you through um, 
the shape of the arm. So once I've got this in through here, I can do a similar kind of in seam for the back to meet the arm. This arm's gonna, we're gonna see a little bit more because the elbow's almost behind the back. So I'm gonna take it from here and I'm gonna ride myself pretty close to this vertical line, something like this, but bump it out just a little bit in through here. So this is gonna give us the back corner of that arm. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come, um, I would say about almost two inches away from this vertical line, right about in through here on my oval. So about almost halfway up. This is about halfway up. I'm a little bit shy of that. This is now gonna connect to this shoulder. So I'm gonna take, think of this as the shoulder in through here, and then this is our little baby bicep. <laughs> our baby, little baby fat bicep. There you go, like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a little bump for the forearm in through here. So this is gonna come right uh, like this and in through here. This will make a lot more sense once all my guidelines are gone. <laughs> this just helps me guide you through it. So then I, I wanna put the um, kind of the other side of the, the underside of the forearm, but I want to know where the wrist is. So I can take this right about from here where we made this marker here. I can give myself a curved line that's gonna resemble kind of the top of that um, oval shape. This is the wrist. And then I can give myself a little bit more natural of a um, bump out down at the bottom side of that arm. So a little bit more width will create that, that the bottom of the baby's arm. Now we just need to do the hand. So the hand we are just seeing like the little baby knuckles and like part of this side of the hand. I can't use, my, my hand is not a good example because my hand is much older than this one. So we're just gonna take from, um, from this right hand side of this um, oval type of a shape and I'm gonna bump out one little finger in through here, two little finger, <laughs> little finger, two little finger, three little finger, and these are all, maybe those need to go a little bit closer together. And then four little finger. We're not gonna see the thumb. We're just gonna kind of see the, the bump where the, the hand of the thumb would go. And that's gonna go right in through here. So now I can erase those lines that are gonna pose me confusion later. So I can just take and erase that in interior oval. Not that, that's the wrist. So that'll be this line. This guy in through here. I should probably get a better eraser. Hold on one second, I need a better eraser. <laughs> that eraser was already used quite a bit before I started here, so we're gonna get a bigger eraser. Like that. And again, these finger bumps, they're just there right now. We, they don't need to be perfect. I'm gonna erase this vertical straight line. Again, that was just used to give you a little guidance. You could even down um, in here, you could even bump this out just a little bit to give you um, just the, the more shape to the, to the side of the baby's body, like that. And then we can take this and just erase this line in through here. And now we have all we need in order to start painting. So once you've got this done, you can certainly make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel might be necessary. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush for the next step, so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to be using my number four round to pre-mix four custom colors. So the colors I'm using in this step are black, brown, white, green, red, and burnt sienna. And what I'm gonna, the colors I'm gonna make are a custom skin color, gray, which we'll be using for the um, white parts of the hat. I'm gonna make a dark red for the hat, and we're gonna make a dark green for the base coat of the background. So I have magically pre-mixed all of my colors so you can see where I'm headed. So here's my skin tone right in through here. How I achieved this is just burnt sienna and white. Um, to me, a, a baby skin is a little bit sometimes more pinker than an adult 
skin. So my burnt sienna has, um, when I add white to it, it has a pinkish hue in my opinion, in my <laughs> visual opinion. So I am using just these two to create my base skin tone for my, for my baby. And I want it to look nice and soft and like new skin so it's gonna be very smooth looking so that's where I'm headed with that with that tone and then I'm gonna wash and dry my uh, mixing tool I'm gonna make my dark green which is right here how I achieve this is mostly green and just a teeny bit of black the black will turn it dark really really quick so I just add a little dot at a time until I achieve the darkness that I want and I also know that my green will get a little darker as it dries on my canvas so I'm going for just a smudge lighter than I want it to be um, in, in the end result because again I know it's going to get a little bit darker same thing's going to happen with my dark red so I'm going to wash and dry my brush the colors I'm going to use to create that are red and black so the same thought process is going into this one which is mostly red and just a teeny tiny touch of black to create my dark red tone you don't need to go super dark um, we're just using this as the base so when we do put our vibrant red um, tone on it later we'll be able to get some texture into that hat so I'm washing and drying my tool and then I'm gonna pre-mix my gray tone so this is my gray right here it's kind of a mid tone warm gray so how I achieve this is brown black and white so more brown than black so brown just a little bit of black and then white to create this mid-tone warm gray tone this will be used as the base coat for my um for my hat for the white fluffy parts on my hat so this is where i'm headed with my custom colors once i've got those mixed i'm going to put my mixing tool away i'll take out my large bristle brush and i'm going to paint the um where the christmas tree or the background first just getting my stuff out of my way here <laughs> so i'm going to pick up my dark green color now my dark green knowing that it is a dark color on a light surface is going to and i'm using a firm bristle brush it is going to look streaky after this application i'm okay with that because we have lots of steps to go that are going to allow us to get rid of that streakiness. This is really just providing us with a base coat for, um, for building our other details. So it, I'm going right up to my, um, my little person here and I'm just kind of outlining right around that hat. And it's going to, at this point, probably look like I'm outlining it, which I don't typically do, but I, I usually do like the whole background and then I would build the, the uh, baby on top of it. But this one, the contrast and the colors were so much and the baby's taking up so much of the space that I didn't really want to have to overpaint. So we're gonna, we're gonna do it in this method on this one and then um, just giving you different ways to, that you can build your paintings. Um, again, just going right to that hat and then over on this side, I got a big area over here, so we can just kind of be more aggressive with the paint quantity. And it again, the brush stroke at this point really doesn't matter. It, you can go any which way. I'm just trying to um, make it so I don't have any really um, thick spots that would um, leave bumps on my canvas. So if you're working with a heavier bodied paint than I am, I work with a thin bodied student grade paint but if you're working with a heavy bodied um, paint that might leave um, kind of peaks in the in the paint it, if you use it um, if you don't kind of brush it out then I would just suggest brush it out so you have the same level kind of um, paint again the brush stroke doesn't matter but I don't think you necessarily would want too many bumps in the painting so I'm just going to kind of um, make sure that I get rid of any little bumps and again that little crumbs down there um, when you're doing this I'm going right up to my outline of the of the baby and I might distort it a little bit accidentally which 
I'm okay with that because again, I'm using a bigger brush. I know that I'm gonna have, um, the baby is gonna, I still need to paint the baby on top. So I've got lots of work to go. I am being cautious that I kind of stay within the line so I don't distort it too much. Um, and of course you could certainly use a smaller brush if you felt that that would benefit you around these um, littler areas but I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> so I'm just using this brush to fill in these, these little areas, bringing it right to my outline. And you can see even just as I'm outlining it, how you know the arm is taking shape, you can see it more, more um, distinctly. So that looks pretty good, just brushing out any thick spots. So now that I've got the dark green on, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I think I'm gonna go for the baby skin next because the baby is under the hat and through here. So I try to go from the farthest thing back to the, to the thing that's in the front. It'll get a little wonky when I go to the hat, but we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll figure this out. So I wash my brush. I'm picking up now my um, skin tone. And again, no fancy brush stroke, but on this particular section of the um of the painting i am going to leave the evidence of those um guidelines between the arms and the back so that way i don't lose where i wanted those to go if you're using um, a thin bodied student grade paint like i am you may be able to get away with just painting over it and you'll be able to see it underneath but if you're using a heavier body paint and you can't see through your paint, you have better opacity in yours than I do in mine, then you may want to just leave a little um, slice of unpainted canvas where you have that guideline where that arm is going to meet. But again, if you're using pencil like I am, you should be able to just, and student grade paint like I am, you should be able to just see right through it and you'll be able to see that, that guideline. And again, just going to go right in through here. And again, my brush stroke is not entirely important. And again, once you go to the um, the little hands where you might need a littler brush, you could certainly pull out a smaller brush. I think that I'm going to get away with using this one because I can control the tip of it. Um, but if you're if you're having difficulty controlling this big tip in such a small area, you could certainly. Um, go for a smaller brush and again because I'm using pencil or I used pencil as my drawing uh, tool a standard just um, number two pencil the lead in it is showing right through my paint so I don't have to worry about um, not being able to see where I wanted that wrist to go or the or the little separation between those fingers but if you needed to um, leave those areas vacant so you can see your guideline. You can certainly do that. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I think I'm gonna go for my red part first because the fluffy part to me would kind of like overlap in through here, even though it tucks behind there. I'm just gonna go for my red part first. So what I'm gonna do on this is I'm gonna use my dark red, but I'm also gonna use black a little bit where these two lines meet. So I'm gonna pick up a teeny bit of black teeny tiny bit <laughs> and I'm gonna put a little bit right in through here where this line is so just a teeny tiny bit in through there this is gonna allow us to um, get that head to have some shape then I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel so I don't have a lot on there and I'm picking up my dark red and now I can just paint in this whole area with my dark red so you can even overlap it into that black and you could use a dotting I think I'm using, I'm going to use a dotting uh, brush stroke so we have um, the start of some nice texture in this hat. You could certainly use um, a swirling or perhaps uh, the brush stroke doesn't even matter, um, but I'm going to use this dotting because I know that I want this hat to be super duper fluffy and this will help me right off the bat get that information in there. I'm gonna do the same thing when I get to the um, gray part of the hat too. So just kind of dotting and it, it's gonna overlap the edges of the green background a little bit, that's fine. 
totally fine. That's just going to start the process. And you might even find that you want your hat to go off the canvas at the top. You might not even want that sliver of um, green behind it. So if you're finding that you want that hat to just go right off the canvas, you could certainly do that. So that's going to be my dark red. And then I'm going to wash my brush and go into my gray. So again, my gray, I'm just going to leave a little evidence of where I want that pom pom -y area to go. Um, and my gray will probably cover my pencil, so I'm going to just have to be a little bit more careful with that. Just putting the paint right on the tip of my brush right now so I can get this little section right in here. And again, I'm not it terribly concerned about it being perfect right now. I just want to get this first layer on here. So I'm just going to kind of tap this over in through here and then get the over in through here. Again, just using the tip of my brush with just an itty bitty bit of paint on there so I can control where I want it to go like this. And I'm using a, a dotting technique to, uh, to apply my paint with this gray, but the gray doesn't really matter as much as the, uh, the red did because the, the gray is such a good coverage um, type of, of paint. It has great opacity in it. Um, so the stippling effect when you're just using the gray, you don't see it as much as you do with, um, with that dark red. I'm going right around this little pom-pom area. And then when I do the pom-pom, again, just the gray, but I'm going to leave um, just a little hint where the gray meets the gray. <laughs> I'm going to leave just a little hint of that exterior edge just so I know where I want, wanted that to go. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the tree and the wall. I'm going to be using my uh, large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to be using are dark green, black, burnt sienna, red, yellow, and maybe a touch of white. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So we're not putting any lights on the trees yet, on the tree yet. This is just putting in place the out of focus impression of a Christmas tree. So I really just need some dark greens and blacks and little soft, um, kind of gradations to create little bits of texture. I do want to give the implication or the impression that the edge of the tree is kind of over here. So somebody looking at it doesn't think that the kid is just walking into a bunch of lights, but maybe towards a Christmas tree. I am using a photo reference as inspiration, but we're going to go a little bit more loosey goosey with it than the photo reference. So there is a Christmas tree off in the distance in that one. So I'm pre-mixing myself a orange color to uh, use as the wall color. That's what I was talking about. We're going to see just the edge of the tree. So we need a little piece of wall over there. So I have pre-mixed my wall color here <laughs> on my palette. This is the orange type of tone that I was, um, that I was telling you I was going to make. So how I got to this was burnt sienna, yellow, and red. So I'm in essence adding orange to my burnt sienna. So it's making, I need a little bit more yellow than that. So it's making it lighter, but more orange. Just need to move my head so I can see the color in the lights here. So I think I need a little bit more yellow and a little bit more red. So think of it just, you know, almost orange, orange, but a little bit on the rustier side um, in order to give us this nice toasty warm kind of wall color. <laughs> I think it's being illuminated by the Christmas tree too. So that's why it's got such an orange tone to it with the lights on the Christmas tree. So that's where I'm headed with that. So what I'm first going to do is kind of tone that wall with this color and then we'll get into um, softening up and putting a second layer on this dark green area to imply that it's a Christmas tree. So I'm starting with my uh, wall color. I want the edge of the tree to be somewhere in, in this vicinity and just kind of, you could even just kind of tell yourself, okay, I want, I want my 
my edge to just kind of look like this. The orange is the wall color, <laughs> so something like this. So I'm in essence kind of reversing out what uh, where the Christmas tree is going to be over in through here. Maybe some down by the kid's hand in through here, and then. I'm going to just put a thin layer of this um, orange. I don't want it to be as orange as it is on my palette. That's why I'm putting it on top of this green. So this way it's going to take, it's going to be a much kind of deeper, richer, softer tone. And I will build it up as, um, as after it dries, I'll, I'll give it some more oomph to it. But right now just kind of putting on a light layer and I'm giving a soft edge to where it's meeting the Christmas tree because the Christmas tree is going to be out of focus. So this is just pretend that this is not pretend, but <laughs> imagine that this is just the, um, you know, the wall is also out of focus. So we're going to do that with just a nice thin coat. I don't even have to wash my brush. I could even apply uh, apply this orange elsewhere. So I could just take it and, you know, maybe put some kind of glowy areas throughout the rest, throughout the tree. There's going to be some lights everywhere. So I could just kind of dabble that in wherever I want. And now that I've kind of worked some of that off my brush, now I'm going to start incorporating my green and I'll use a little bit of black every now and again as well. So I can just pick up on my dirty brush, my green, and I can start, I'm going to be using a more circular type of brush stroke to get this second coat on. Don't be afraid to bump into your little person here um, because it's gonna look more natural if you actually bump into it as opposed to it looking like you're painting around. So I just picked up a tiny bit of black paint to get some darker little tones in through here. And I'm using this circular brush stroke in order to, again, imply that there is um, softness, out of focus um, type of appearance to it. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more green on my dirty brush and just get this area up and through here. Maybe a touch of black. You can go, you could in essence kind of go all black if you wanted to, but I definitely want there to be the implication of um, lights and that it's a green Christmas tree. So that's where I'm gonna, that's where I'm incorporating um, the green as well. And you can fly around all around the painting if you want. I'm putting a little bit more black on my brush just to maybe get some of these edges in through here like this. Kind of sporadic with the green and the black. Now I just picked up some green. And again, I'm not washing my brush. So this is really just about adding these tones to say, okay, we're inside the dark, the dark Christmas tree. The tree itself will typically look pretty dark when the lights are on because the lights are stealing the vibrant show. Um, so knowing that, I know that I can go pretty, pretty dark around um, here, but again, I don't necessarily want it to be totally black. So as I'm going through my process, I am just kind of trying to be mindful that I do want some green to show and also that it will probably get a little bit darker as it dries. So, and you can always, whenever you want, pick up some of that orange. I just picked up a little bit more of that orange. You can incorporate those little tones into um, the tree as well. That's gonna look awesome when we when we put the lights on later. So think of that as like uh, just a little glow um, throughout the tree. I'm gonna pick up some more of my um, green and just kind of finish out this side over here. So where it's kind of meeting that orange area, this is where I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit more black with my um, with my green so I can and again I don't want it to go all the way black so as I'm going through this if I do find that it's too much I'm just gonna make sure that I uh, rub out that black or even wipe my brush off on my paper towel if I need to but I want there to be this illusion of an out of focus Christmas tree back there so I'm using very little bit of paint and I'm allowing for just these, um, the, the idea that maybe there could be some branches, again, green and black, just keep, I keep flip-flopping um, just for the intensity of how dark or light that I want it to be. Maybe a little bit in through here. And again, this step is intended just to get 
his arm black <laughs> just to get the Christmas tree in place. So we, I, again, I can use this, um, these soft bristle, well, the soft uh, dry brush approach that gives a soft appearance to create the illusion of that tree over in that, in that side. Picking up a little bit more green on my dirty brush. And when I say green, I'm talking about the dark green. Um, just picking up a little bit more of that dark green, get around his hand and through here. And we're gonna have lots of little out of focus twinkle lights and stuff. So as you're going through this, if you're thinking, mm, it's not exactly as I thought it would be, <laughs> know that we get to disguise a lot of stuff with the twinkle lights that we'll be putting on in a few minutes so, or in a future step. So just know that, that that step will also be coming. And of course, I just kind of keep enhancing, allowing myself to provide a nice smooth transition. Um, the softness from the circular brush stroke that I'm creating is allowing for this to look really nice and out of focus and allowing me to uh, build some good dimension. I'm just going right down around the little arm in through here. That looks good. And then I feel like I definitely want to uh, put another pass with that wall color, just making sure that it's dry enough for me. I'm going to wash my brush because I have lots of black on it. And I want to hit that wall color just one more time here. So washing and dry my brush. So if you're, my wall color is just about dry. Just kind of wipe out a little of those thick spots. So you could do this several times. You could go over this as many times as you want. You could continue to add colors to it, but I feel that um, in in this process for me that this is going to be enough. I'm going to put a little bit more lightness here, but the rest is going to be enough for me to build all of my lights off of. So I'm picking up more of that, um, of that orangey tone, and you'll see how this second layer is going to get brighter. And you could even, if you're Say you want this bottom part a little bit darker than the top part of the wall, you could always pick up a tiny bit of the burnt sienna as well, and that'll add kind of a little bit more of a richness to the tone and maybe a little bit deeper of a tone as it's going down towards the floor or towards more lights down below. So you can certainly use the burnt sienna um, as one of the color combinations throughout this wall color. Uh, you could also use a touch of white. So I'm going to work my way up to the top and then I'll put a tiny bit of um, white in it. But again, all the while I'm thinking, I don't want to overdo the um, this wall type of a color because I don't want it to take away from my little, my little person. Um, but you can, of course, make yours as bright as you want. Just a little bit more of that wall color. And then if you wanted to, um, you can pick up just a tiny, I mean, when I say tiny, I mean tiny, just tiny bit of white paint, and you could amp up that color just a little bit. So again, I'm going to be adding more color when I go to do the lights, but if you felt that you wanted that wall color to be a little bit more vibrant, you could certainly do that. And of course, you could pick up more of the burnt sienna to deepen it, so whatever works for you. And then once you've got this done, you can certainly fiddle with it as much as you want. We are going to be using, uh, I feel like I would like to use this same brush for the next step, so the large bristle brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. If you can finish this step, this one little spot here, I'm like, that's not good yet. There we go. You can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the second layer on the skin. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna be using my number four round to premix another custom color and this one I'm calling dark skin. <laughs> so this will be a dark skin tone um, that we'll be using to start our shadows and um, put a little bit of contour into the baby's body. I'm going to be using um, my skin tone plus burnt sienna and brown to create my dark skin and then we'll be using our regular, uh, that base skin tone um, to just put a second layer on the skin. I might use a little white too, not sure yet. 
So I have premixed myself my dark skin tone here on my palette so you can see where I'm headed. How I achieved this was my regular skin tone and then I just added about equal parts of burnt sienna and brown to it, burnt umber. And this will create a darker, richer tone to the skin. So I need, I had a little bit too much of my light, lighter skin tone, so now I need to add more brown and burnt sienna. <laughs> and then just mix that together. And this is, look, looks pretty good. So I'm going for maybe about three or four shades darker of a skin tone. This isn't going to be the darkest of the dark, but it definitely is going to help us understand where those shadows are going to be and give us a nice smooth coat to proceed on future steps with. So once I have my dark skin tone, I put my mixing tool away. I'm taking out my large bristle brush. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of that um, dark skin tone on the tip of my brush. I'm going to have shadows on the back side of this arm in through here. I'm going to have shadow underneath this hat in through here. I'm going to have shadow between this arm and on this um, this side of the body and then shadow underneath this arm and through here. Uh, there will be little shadows in the wrists and between the fingers and stuff like that too, which I will start now, um, but those deeper shadows will come later. The back itself is going to be a little bit darker down and the bottom left and go a little bit lighter as it goes up towards the top right. So I'm starting with my dark skin tone. I'm going to paint most of this arm back here with this dark skin tone and through here. This is where I can go right to my um, guideline that I had and then just kind of blend it out. The edge of this arm, I suppose you could do this dark um, tone. We, we're going to add some highlight to it later. And then I just let myself kind of run out of paint as I'm going away from away from that um, left edge. So that's going to give me that nice um, darkness in through there. And then I can take my brush and use it in that dry brush type of technique along this um, back side of the, of the baby in through here like this. I'm going to pick up some of my regular skin tone now as I'm moving up this back in through here on my dirty brush. So these will, these colors will mix in together with one another like that. Just allowing for myself to have a nice soft skin tone right now. And then once I get up in through here, I'm going to, uh, I'll add some more of that, uh, the dark skin tone. Just get these to blend in just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of that dark skin tone again, just on the, on the tip of my brush. I'm going to put it right underneath this hat. So I do have a little fluffy edge to this hat, so you could tap it, but um, the hat, when we get to there, we'll take care of that later. <laughs> we'll take care of that fluffy entry um, between the two of them. And then there's going to be a little highlight on the entire exterior edge of the baby because the, um, the Christmas tree is illuminating the baby from the other side. So we're going to have some highlight over on that other side. So right now I'm just allowing for myself to say, okay, there's a shadow underneath the hat and then the shadow might kind of cast down a little bit down that back in through here. And then I'm going to um, start picking back up my, my regular skin tone to get this to blend in and just allowing for it to gently blend in together. Again, I'm not using a lot of pressure, so I'm just using a circular brush stroke, trying to keep this nice and smooth looking. Um, and because I'm using two colors that are very similar, only one's a little bit darker than the other, it's allowing for me to get a nice um, soft appearance to it. I'm going to pick up some of that dark skin tone to go underneath this arm over here. So again, kind of scooting this right where my line is and then I can even scoot a little bit of it on the side of that body. And I can also put some on the bottom side of this arm. So this is the, the dark skin tone. I probably have a little bit of the light, the mid tone on there as well, but this is just going to kind of give me this bottom back side of this arm in through here. That looks good. And we're going to have lots of little, um, 
baby rolls <laughs> on this arm too. You can even put just a little bit in that wrist, but again, that'll be taken care of when when we go to with a smaller brush. And now I'm gonna just pick up some of my, uh, I'm actually, I wanna kinda light, I'm gonna wash my brush because I want this to uh, not be tainted with that darker tone. So I'm washing my brush and I'm gonna pick up my, um, my original skin tone. So now I don't have any of that dark tone on my brush. So this will help me to, th this color on this shoulder will be a little bit lighter and brighter because I don't have um, that brown or that darker skin tone on my, on my bristles. And I probably will add a little bit of white too, especially in a future step. Not sure if I'll do it right now, but um, let's see, we've got this little cute arm in through here. Uh, I think I want this to be a little bump in through there. And then we have this guy little baby bicep <laughs> right in through there oh my god babies are so fun to to paint because they're so their skin is so soft and it doesn't have the wrinkles in it it's a it's a great place to start too if you're if you want to get into portraits because this i mean i guess there's two schools of thought an older person has more wrinkles and um color variations in their skin so it doesn't have to be as pristine as a little baby's but um i think that it's more challenging to have to um, create lots of different tones so with a baby's skin there's not as many different tones as there is with with adult skin so it's oh i guess part of learn learning to paint which which way you like to do what comes easier and more natural to you. I'm just using the corner of my brush right now um, in order to just kind of get a little second layer on in through there. That's so cute. Picking up a tiny bit of the dark uh, skin tone just to get this little guy, this little edge over in through here. And I think that's all I'm gonna do for that step. He's already, I don't know if it's a he or she. <laughs> this baby's already looking super cute. So once you've got yours, in a place that is pleasing to your eye we're going to be using um i'd like to use my small bristle brush so the quarter inch bristle brush for the next step so do any little adjustments you want put the large bristle brush away take out a small smaller bristle brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some christmas lights so these will be all of the out of focus twinkle colors that are going to be luring this little person to the Christmas tree. So I'm using my um, my quarter inch bristle brush. I'm going to be using white, yellow, red, blue, green. Um, and that might be it. I might use some other colors and if I do I will call them out. But my dominant color I'm going to use is white and then I'm gonna use hues of other stuff. I definitely want these to be out of focus, so that's why I'm using a nice bristle brush to accomplish this. And I will never have a ton of paint on my brush at any one time. So if I want a bright light, I just loaded my brush with some white paint. Let's say I want a big bright light over here. I'm gonna do it in this circular type of shape but I wanna have soft edges to it. So if I have a lot of paint on my brush, I can just wipe my, my paint off on my paper towel, and then I can just kind of keep going around those edges until that color kind of dissipates or blends into that background. And that's gonna give me this light kind of glow around it. So, and then I'm gonna let that dry and then I can come back and put some color on top of it. So I can do as many of these as I want. So if I want one maybe partially over the kid's shoulder, I can say, okay, well, let's put one in through here, make a partial one like that, make sure my I'm not overloaded with my brush and then just kind of softly get that glow to appear around the exterior. So that's where this firm bristle brush is gonna come in handy because it allows you to keep pushing that paint out further um, without having to um, add moisture to it. It just allows you to um, 
thin it out on the canvas. And if, if sometimes you will see little like dry marks of the canvas. You can always add a tiny bit of water to your brush and that'll help you to get almost reopen the edge of that can that paint and it'll allow you to soften those edges even more. You can get these marks to overlap one another too. So let's say I wanted a, a bright one in through here and I've got it where I want it to go. I can put another one kind of with maybe less paint that just overlaps it. And those, those uh, marks will look like they are kind of intermingled with one another. And when I put the color on them, they'll make a lot more sense. I am gonna put some that are kind of outside of my, of my canvas. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of fly through these, these white parts making just, you know, varying size ones, maybe letting my brush run out of paint so I have some lighter ones and some darker ones. And you could certainly be doing this with color um, in this initial process, but I feel as though, um, you know, for this particular tree, I kind of want there to be um, some very bright, um, dominant, kind of colors throughout this. So I feel that this white base is gonna help me through that, make it an easier process for me. So as I'm going through this, again, make as many as you want, allow for them to kind of scoop behind the baby in whatever way you want. I'm gonna let myself kind of run out of paint as I'm doing these so that way I can have some um, brighter ones, some more dull ones. Again, trying to allow myself to not be cons not be too consistent. I definitely want to have a little bit of chaos, um, making some smaller ones, making some bigger ones. I'm digging, just kind of running, uh, allowing myself to run out of paint. You could even put, again, a little bit of water on your brush and allow for a more transparent. I didn't put any more paint, I just um, put water on my brush and this will give me a little bit more transparent of, um, of an application. You could even dot it off, but again, I'm gonna be using um, color in a minute. I just wanted to show you ways that you could have different um, intensities with your lights. The lights can be at the end of your, your Christmas tree edge here too, but I would be mindful um, if you take too much of that, if you put too many lights in that area, you might take away from the edge of the, um, of the tree that you, that you put in there. So I would just be kind of cautious about making too many in through there. And then just, you know, you could even do a little, just tiny polka dotty ones. I'm um, doing some all off the edge. Uh, some behind the hat that'll make the hat pop out a little bit more so would again whatever you feel would benefit you for the color um, pattern so once you've got enough um, dots out of focus kind of big circular big and small dots now you can start adding some color so this is where I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and let's say I wanted some bright green on the exterior of this. I could use maybe green and a little bit of yellow because I know that those two colors are gonna make a super green <laughs> kind of highlight around that one. I'll come back and amp up the, the middle in a minute, but I'm digging this green, so I'm gonna just kind of go for it on a couple of them. Maybe I make that whole one green. Maybe I just do the exterior of this one. So any ones that you want, maybe a little one down and through here, you can go on top of it, you can go on the edges of it, it's gonna to be totally up to you. You could even take this and do just these additional kind of hues elsewhere. So you could overlap. It's just, it's a, just a playful game of allowing yourself to make these out of focus kind of, um, I call them polka dots, <laughs> polka dots, um, but you can certainly make them in, you know, their Christmas lights, so you can have whatever way you want. Now I can pick up, let's say, um, if I wanted to brighten this up, I can wash my brush and I can uh, put a little bit more white in the center, but you'll want to make sure that white, that the center is dry. 
before you put that second layer on and then I can just take and put a second layer of white on the middle and blend it out to that green and now I have this super bright um, out of focus dot because I have that glow on the outside. So I'm gonna, um, I think I wanna pick up a, a little bit, I need to wash my brush because I wanna get that white off. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and red. I'm gonna do a couple of maybe some orangey ones, just kind of giving maybe a little bit more red. And again, totally up to you how you wanna do this, what the intensity of your lights you want them to be, it's gonna be a, a, a game that you play all on your own. I can put a whole red one in here if I wanted to, just giving myself that, that soft edge. I love it when they overlap, so don't be afraid to, to let them overlap. Um, I think I'm gonna do maybe a little bit more red up in through here, and the red can be used to complement you know, your Santa hat, you can do whatever whatever you want. Um, I think I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna put some white in the centers of these. You know, I could probably put, I feel like I wanna do something else. I feel like I want a little yellow or, um, let's go wild. I don't think I said I was using blue. I'm going yellow and blue. So this is gonna make like this teal kind of greenish color. See if this is gonna do what I want. I need a little more blue than that. <laughs> so you can you can do whatever kind of color. That's more blue, more blue. Just go bold, be blue. There we go. So you can do these different hues, you know, put them around, anything you want. It's up to you. Now I'm gonna um, pick up a little bit of white, wash and dry my brush, get those colors off of there and then brighten up these centers. And again, the centers can be brightened just with white, or you can use a little bit of white with a touch of yellow. You could use it with um, a touch of red, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be just white that brightens it up as you're, as you're going through this process. If you want to incorporate other colors, it's, again, this is just your process. I want maybe a little bit more yellow over here. So I just picked up yellow with my white so you can see what that did to that. So it's, this is all you. <laughs> this is all you, how you want to, how you want to bright, brighten up your, your holiday tree. That one's gonna get a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. And I'm gonna pick up some more white and you just kind of keep going until you feel that you have it in that pleasurable place for you. Um, sometimes I feel that I get a little overzealous and um, make too many. Um, so I have to kind of hold myself back. Um, I do like my edges to be nice and soft around these. So sometimes I go back over a second time and just allow for the softness of um, my bristles to allow um, them to get nice and bright. Oh, these are looking pretty. Um, but the glow is gonna happen with the color around that center. So if you're going through it and you feel that you need or want a little bit more color, just put a little, you know, a little red and orange goes a long way or red and yellow goes a long way around these guys. Um, and it, you can just put it on the outside. That's gonna help them glow. And you can see as I'm going through this process, I keep kind of, you know, some of them keep morphing. <laughs> some of them I'm making new ones. You know, you can really have at it and have fun with it. Just keep layering it again until you feel that you've got as much on there as you want. And then once you've got this in a place that is visually appealing to you, you can, let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're actually gonna use this same small bristle brush for the next step. So if you can ever stop making fun um, holiday polka dots, <laughs> again, make, make a lot, make as many as you want. But once you've made as many as you want, you can um, wash, oh gosh, here I go, wash and dry. I want one here too, this, um, Oh, that one's got to go rounder. There we go. Wash and dry this medium or this small bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the baby's skin. I'm going to be using 
my quarter inch bristle. I might go into my number four round for those little fingers, um, but I'm thinking I'm gonna hopefully be able to get away with using just this brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, my dark skin tone, my light skin tone, white, and I might use a little bit of um, burnt sienna. If I go into any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna accentuate this shadow right underneath this hat. I'm gonna accentuate the shadow underneath the um, arm in through here, as well as in through here. We're gonna put another layer onto the skin, this time with a little bit more highlights up at the top of the shoulder, around the edge, on the forearm, and on the hand, and we're gonna get that little wrinkle, wrist wrinkle to appear. So I'm gonna start with my super dark stuff first, which will be underneath here and in, in these areas. I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of black paint. Well, that was just way too much, hold on. <laughs> I didn't heed my own tiny bit warning. Um, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of black paint on my brush, just the tip of my brush. And I'm gonna um, go right up into this area, just right up in through here. I just allow myself to get a pretty dark um, little shadow. You can just let yourself run out of paint as you go left to right, and then just pull this out just a little bit in through here. So once you've got it pulled out a little bit, now it, you don't want a lot of black paint on your brush, but you can pick up some of your dark skin tone and get it to blend down that, um, down that shoulder a little bit more. So just a little bit on my brush, allowing for it to blend down that shoulder a little bit more. And then that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna do the same thing underneath here. I'm gonna pick up just a teeny tiny bit of black paint. I'm gonna go right in this crevice right in through there. And I can make this pretty dark in through here. And then pick up my dark skin tone just to blend it out. But again, be mindful that you don't have too much black on your brush when you go to um, blend it out and then just blend it up. And I'm using just a, a light rubbing type of technique. And then on this side in through here, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more of my dark skin tone on my dirty brush again, and using this rubbing technique, circular rubbing technique to just get a little bit more darkness over here. And this edge of the body in through here I want it to be kind of dark, but not maybe as dark as I have here. Maybe it's being lit up by a little bit of the um, lights. I just picked up a tiny bit of my mid-tone on my dirty brush to close out the top of this shoulder in through here. I will put a little extra highlight on it, but right now just giving using the uh, mid-tone as my as my initial kind of highlight over there. And then that looks pretty good. I need a little bit of darkness down this center back. So I'm gonna pick up some of my dark skin tone and my light skin tone. Think of it where the spine is in through here. I'm gonna put a little bit of both of those colors, maybe a little bit more of the dark tone in through here, just to give myself a little bit more contour on that back. and then just kind of rub it out to this left-hand side and allowing it to blend over these shadowy areas in through here. So something like that. I feel like the little shoulder blade area would probably be the, the lightest in through here. So I'm gonna pull just a little bit of this darkness. And again, I'm just using the remnants on my brush to create a little bit more darkness in through here and maybe up on this side over here. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna pick up some of my mid-tone skin just to put another little layer right here just to make sure that that's um, doing what I wanted to, which is just telling you a little bit about that shoulder blade and through there. That looks good. And then over and through here in the photo reference I'm using has a little dip in the skin and through here. 
um, because the arm is back. So I just picked up a little bit of the dark skin tone. I'm gonna go with a little bit on my dirty brush. I didn't wash my brush. I'm gonna go with a little bit of a dip in the skin in through here, like that. And then it's definitely pretty dark down here. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black on my brush and get this to go even darker right underneath here like this and it kind of comes out a little bit and back in and this is just giving this little baby a little more form i'm gonna uh i feel like i have too much black on my brush right now and i don't want to taint this so i'm going to wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit, this is where I feel like I wanna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna. I feel like there's a little bit redder tones underneath here, so I just picked up a little bit of burnt sienna. I might opt to, uh, that's, too, that's too orangey. I'm gonna pick up um, actually a little bit of my dark red and brown. So dark red and brown, yeah, that's better. The burnt sienna was too orangey for me, so that's where I, I wanted to uh, get some darkness down there, but not too much, not too orangey. And then I just pick up my mid-tone and get it to blend out. So that dark red helped me to get a, a nice shadowy tone down in through there. This is giving me the little wrinkle in the back and the little movement in the back. I think I want to pick up a little bit more of that dark red. To I'm digging the, it as a shadow kind of color on the skin just in here that speaks to those pinky tones that I was saying earlier that I see <laughs> in in child skin as opposed to adult skin so the this reddish this dark red I'm digging it so I, I probably should have realized I was going to want to use it I just picked up more from the bottom side of this arm so a little bit of the dark red And then I'm gonna pick up um, some of my mid skin tone to travel up this arm. And of course you can use this in combination. You might not want yours the same exact tone as mine. You might uh, want, I'm gonna actually probably pick up a little bit of that dark skin tone as well to just get it to blend out a little bit more. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> I love when the baby skin starts to come together. There we go. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my lighter skin tone or my mid tone for up on top of this shoulder. I am going to put some white in a second too, but I just want to make sure I've got the shape that I want. That looks good. And a little bit on this bicep area in through here. So this little crease right here this whole part of the arm is going to be light. So I'm going to add a touch of white to get that the way that I want. Almost, almost got it as smooth as I want. There we go. So now I'm going to pick up a touch of white on my dirty brush to get this um, top shoulder area nice and light. So right up and through here, a little bit of white is on my dirty brush and I can blend it down a little bit down this shoulder in the back, a little bit down this little um, baby fat area right behind that uh, armpit area, and then down this right side of the arm. I'm going to put, and if the white is too white for you, you can use the white with your light skin tone. So you don't have to go as light as I'm going. If you want yours a little bit darker, you can certainly use it with um, the with your mid-tone or just use the mid-tone as your highlight. That'll be totally up to you how, um, how light you want this to go. I'm gonna put this pretty light in through here. And then this that little baby fat area. <laughs> and I'm gonna put um, some, uh, white in through here on this forearm so this is where i'm starting to get the the little baby fat rolls on the arm because i'm allowing for that crease to happen in through um here as well as maybe a little bit here i need to put a little bit more shadow in through there 
I'm going to put a little highlight here too, picking up my mid-tone to just get this wrist to appear. There we go. It's great. I definitely need a little bit darker in through here. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my dark skin. Uh, I'm going to wash my brush first. Wash my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my dark skin tone and that dark red. Just an itty bitty bit. I might even have to change brushes to the small brush to get in through here, but I just want a little tiny, a little tiny shadow in through here to say that that's that little, that the little baby fat is kind of making that, that shadow. There we go, that looks cute. I'm gonna do the same thing around that wrist. So uh, dark red plus a touch of my dark skin tone right around this wrist area. I think I said I was gonna use brown in this step too. I don't know if I used brown at all, but. So right around this wrist and it's on the hand side. The shadow is falling on the hand, not on this little fat roll. So that's gonna make a big difference where you place that shadow as to um, kind of the appearance of the the um the volume of the the um the little baby fat you can put this darkness a little bit inside these fingers this is where i'm like oh, i don't know if i should use this brush or not but we'll see when i put the highlight if that goes away or not, if it if it works out or not and then maybe just pull this up just a little bit on that hand so cute. All right, I'm picking up, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some of the mid-tone, mid-skin tone. I'm going to put, just making sure this is nice and light around these knuckles and that I've got this accounted for. And then we'll put a little highlight. So as I'm building these little fingers, even though I put that dark, ah, so cute, sorry. <laughs> I can't control my, my emotions when it comes to cute things, I guess. I just picked up some more white so I can get a little bit lighter on this uh, wrist. So just a little bit lighter on this wrist with just a touch more white. It's going to just allow for that to look just a little bit fuller. So this, the hand looks flat to me right now because it's not, I don't have my, the little um, lighter spots in. So I'm just putting a little bit of white on my brush which is going to puff out the skin on the fingers, maybe on these little knuckles. You might even see little little dimples, if you will, on, on a baby, like not on my hand for sure. <laughs> you see wrinkles on me. You see dimples on a little baby. So you could um, lighten up the, the fingers and then there's these little like dimply, um, which would be little darker marks kind of where the um where the fingers go <laughs> my hand is not the hand to be demonstrating what that would look like um, and then picking up just a little bit more of my mid-tone just to get it to all blend in and the the lines between the fingers in the in the photo are very minimal so um as you're doing yours if you're finding that you have big gaps or your your lines are super dark in between the fingers you might want to just um, back it off so it's subtle. This um, it's definitely very subtle in the in the photo, so um, that'll make it look kind of more uh, plumper. I guess is the right word. If we're not seeing too much of those separations between the between the knuckles, um, and just a little bit more, I think of the uh, dark skin tone, just a little tiny bit right here. And then I would just kind of fiddle with it. I would step back, let mine dry for a few minutes, see if like this might need a little bit more finessing in through here. So I would just kind of uh, play with my little, my little blends. And then once you've got it into a place that is comfortable to you, we are going to be using our large bristle brush for the next step. So you can put this small bristle brush away take out the large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the hat. I am using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are gray, white, brown, black, red, and maybe some dark red, but I'm not sure yet. 
So I'm going to finish the um, I'm going to finish the red part first and then the white part. So what I really just want to do is finesse this a little bit more, this inside shadowy area, make sure it looks like it's sitting on the head. So I'm going to highlight this part in through here. So that'll make it look like there's an actual object inside of there. And then I'm going to uh, put another layer on here. I don't know if I said I'm using red. I am definitely using red. I'm going to put a, a layer on here with my red to um, high, which is going to be my highlight for my dark red. And if I feel I want to do anything more up at the top, I certainly will. So I'm going to start in my dark area and work my way to the light area. I'm going to, um, I don't, I don't feel I want to, I'm afraid to pick up more black. I'm going to pick up just a teeny tiny bit of black teeny tiny bit, <laughs> plus my dark red, teeny tiny bit of both, just to um, just make sure I've got this exactly where I want it in through here. There looks like there's a couple of little areas that might be a little unpainted, so I'm just kind of tapping it gently to not over paint. I can um, put in a little, you can put a little shadow in through here if you want to. That looks good. And even on this side over here, where the rim of the hat meets this um, part going up, you could certainly pull up little bits of shadows in through there. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my dark red, just kind of going up this side a little bit. It looks like it's pretty dark uh, in the photo in this area in through here. That looks good. Uh, just making sure that's fully executed. So now I'm going to start, I'm going to pick up a little bit more I'm going to wash that black off of my brush first. Make sure I don't do something I don't want to do. Um, I'm picking up more of my dark red to kind of get this section down at the bottom here a little wet with dark red. Now I'm going to pick up red. So I just picked up some red and you're going to see how just, and I'm just stippling, I'm dotting this on here. So just stippling, and this is going to give me a ton of texture. It's going to make it look like the little head is sitting inside this hat, and I want my brightest area right around here. So that'll tell the viewer that's what's sticking out the most, and that's where that round little head is. And then I can, um, in through here, I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my um, dark red because I feel in the photo it's a little bit darker right in through here where the hat dips a little bit in this area. So that's going to be a little bit more dark red. And I've got my dark red over here. I think I'm ready to start picking up just red. So on my dirty brush, I'm picking up red to give myself my second coat over in through here. This is going to travel all the way up to the tippy top of my hat. And again, I'm just dotting. So you, it'll, because I'm dotting, it is allowing for some of that dark red that we put on in the first coat to show itself and to be part of this color combination. If you're going through this and you feel, and again, you've got um, thicker paint than I do and yours is coming out all just bright red, then perhaps you can um, dot it with the dark red as well. So I'm gonna come right down in through here Probably I'm going to put a little extra shadow down here where it goes into the pom-pom. And then I can just dot my second coat. And you can see the dark red next to the red red, how different they can be. And, and without even doing much, I just made that dark red a, a shade or two darker than my... Um, than my fire red and it allows for you to have great contrast and to see those um, that textural element. I'm going to bring this all the way up here. I think I do want this top to be a little lighter but I don't want it to go pink on me so I'm going to use um, red and yellow. I didn't say I was going to use yellow and I just put them both on my brush at the same time uh, with a touch of white too red, yellow, and a touch of white. So this is going to give me this nice highlight up at the top. I'm going to put more red in a minute, but the yellow helps to counteract my red from turning pink. So if you, if you don't want 
too much pink in your hat, <laughs> you can use a touch of yellow to counteract that. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking I just want this nice highlight up at the top as if it's being illuminated by whatever's on the other side and then can just kind of wipe my brush off a little bit, pick up a little bit more red. And if I, if I feel I need any more highlight than that, I can certainly add more. But I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. I don't, uh, maybe just a little bit more just on this edge over here because it's probably catching a little bit of the light. And then just, you know, you just fiddle with that part. So once I've got that, I'm just putting my head back to make sure I've got everything that I, that I had dreamt I would have. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to do the, um, the fluff, the white fluffy part. So on this, on my photo reference that I'm using, it's got, a, it almost looks like this, this part is kind of reflective and it's showing some little hues of red in it. Um, I think I'm just going to turn it a, a white, fluffy, grayish um, tonal shift <laughs> and make it white and fluffy. And I might then after that, if I feel I want to add any additional colors, I certainly will. So this is where I'm going to use my brown, gray, and white in my dark areas. And then I'm going to bring it out to the white light areas. Really in the photo, there's not too many bright, bright white spots. There's a few lighter areas up and through here and then up here on this ball and through here. So we're going to just try and keep those tonal values where I want, where they are in the, in the photo. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of gray and brown on my brush. Just make sure I have, I have kind of a lot of water in my brush right now, which I don't necessarily need. So I'm going to start underneath here and just tap it with my gray and my brown. I think I need a little bit more brown than that. The brown will kind of deepen it for you. And you could also use a bit of black too if you wanted to um, get these tones to go even darker, but I think I think brown's gonna, gonna do me just fine. So I'm using a combination of my gray plus a little bit of brown, even down at the bottom of the um, fluffy part. You can just kind of tap those two colors. That'll give you some good dimension down there. I'm going to pick up more of my um, brown to kind of, um, I'm going to go brown plus gray to come up this left hand side in through here. So maybe this isn't as dark as in through there. This is where there's a bunch of um, almost reddish hues <laughs> in, in the hat. It's probably reflecting. It's amazing when you start to dissect the colors in photographs because they really, it, it's, it's incredible how many objects are reflective. And as you are um, watching the colors in, um, in an object, like I'm putting these dark colors down here, um, you're noticing, or I start to notice, oh my God, there's blue in there. Oh my God, there's purple in there. Oh, there's red in there. So even in the photo in through here, I'm seeing some like blue and purple in here. I'm seeing red over here. So I might incorporate those, but uh, at the moment, I just want to get the tonal values in here so we can have some good dimension on this hat. So that looks good. Now I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my gray plus white on my brush. So just a little bit at the tip of my brush. And I know the, the brighter parts are going to be up top in through here. So I didn't know how much white I had on my brush. So that's kind of why I started up in through there. You can um, always, I like to kind of start in the area, my safer zones <laughs> when I have, when I'm starting with that, that white, cause I never really know exactly how much paint I have on my brush. Um, and because I use these larger bristle brushes, sometimes it's tough to control um, the, um, the quantity of paint that you're using. Um, so we just start in safer zones. And to me, the safer zones would have been where the lightest area is gonna, gonna be. That looks great. And I'm gonna put some over here. This is where I can also start to eliminate my little guy, my edges that I kept because I needed to know where they were gonna go. So I just pick up a little bit more white with my, with my gray, and I'm just kind of tapping using this stippling effect. And again, hardly any paint on my brush, so I don't take away all that uh, effect that we already created. I could go almost white, white right in this little section here. This is a little tiny section, so if you need to pull out the little tiny brush, feel free to do so. 
So that's going to be that little edge to the front of the hat. And this is going to be right here. I'm just making sure right now I'm seeing little spots on my canvas that did not get painted yet. So we're making sure I take care of those. So now that I've got that in place, now I can start really um, adding some super white areas if I wanted to, or adding any um, little tonal changes. I feel like I want to add um, white with a touch of brown. So for me, when I use white with a touch of brown, just a teeny tiny touch, it gives me um, lightness. So I still have my, it's going to give me some brightness in those areas, but it's also going to keep it from turning all the way white too quickly. And for me, I I like to work my way to the white. I want the white to have a lot of power. And if I start too early with white on my brush, then I can't go any whiter than white. So it makes it difficult to give my to allow myself some to those tonal shifts if I've already gone too white too early. If you want a little bit more texture, you can just pull that brush out. Um, instead of dotting, it looks like there's a little texture around the edge in through here. So I can pull a little bit of that out, a little texture in through here. So I'm using this brown and white right now to add any additional little textural elements, um, as well as adding some light tones without, um, without going white, white, white. And then I can certainly just kind of dab this in through here to, it's got some fun stuff going on down here. I feel like there's even more of brownish tones down in through here. So just kind of allowing myself to um, play with the colors that I'm, I'm seeing in, in the photo, but not, I haven't brought it too, too far yet. Oh, that's so cute. Um, I feel like I do want to add some, some other colors, some of that dark red. I'm picking up a tiny bit of that dark red, itty bitty bit. Like I'm going to, I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel because I feel there's, there's just some in here and I feel that it's going to make my painting better. So <laughs> I've got that dark red and I'm just going to kind of intermingle it as if it's just a hue of color in this hat. Maybe it's reflecting off of other stuff. I feel I see it a bunch of places, so I'm going to I'm going to go for it. When I see it, it makes sense for me to do it. And it those are the those are the decisions that I make while I'm painting that can really push the painting into a pretty realistic place, even though I'm just having fun here. <laughs> I tend to want them to look realistic, so that's where my that's where my brain tells me to to take them. And now I'm going to pick up um, just a little bit of the white on my brush, maybe with um, I'm going white with a little bit more brown, just to get these edges. There we go. We're getting we're getting it into a place where my eye is really happy. So this I can just tap right on top and I'm just keeping adding more texture. So you can add as much texture as you want or as little as you want and then maybe just a little little pop here, a little extra pop in through here and then once you've got it into a place that is pleasing to you. Oh, and something like this. So in through here if my white, when I go to put that final white dots, like I can see mine because I knew to, to hold back earlier. Uh, but if you're coming and you're saying, okay, here's going to be my, my bright, bright white stuff and it's not as bright as you want it to be, you can always add other colors near it. You could add, say, a little bit of a light reddish orange tone around the edge. So I could pick up a tiny bit of my orange that we made over here and I could just kind of illuminate the edge of that of that um, hat and that might say oh that's a little it's a little highlight from somewhere I could do that over on the other side too I could if I'm having trouble seeing it um, against the background I could use these little tricks to make it stand up out even more and then this is a little bit difficult for me to see in through here so I'm going to put a little bit more white on my brush just to pop a little bit of extra brightness on my dirty brush so and maybe a little bit of brown down at the bottom there we go and then I would just fiddle with it so once you've got yours into a place 
that is uh, pleasing to your eye. You just sit there and you know make your areas darker if you want or lighter if you want add more color to it if you want and then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put this um, large bristle brush away take out a small detail brush and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right I think I'm going lower left with this one with black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you of course can sign yours however you want. You can make up a special symbol. You can use your initials as I do. You can sign it on the back. You can sign it with your full name. Whatever you want for your identifying mark is up to you because it's your painting and you get to make those executive decisions all on your own. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a sweet image of a Christmas baby. <laughs> I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.